Yes. Uh, I, I bask in your love for me. <laughs> Happy Wednesday, everyone. And even you illegal migrants, Feliz Miracolis. <laughs> I believe that's also Happy Wednesday, according to my high school Spanish, which I failed. All right. So, like a woman trying to throw a football, <laughs> the immigration crisis is spiraling out of control. <laughs> it's just terrible. Why do we even say these things? You don't need us to tell you that, although Fox News is the only one that does. If Bill Malusian and his gorgeous head of hair spend one more day on the southern border, he gets a free milkshake and a blowout. He could donate his hair to bald lions. And why doesn't he? The border's a mess, no doubt, but now so is the sanctuary that is New York City. Up until recently, migrants were being housed in an upscale hotel in midtown Manhattan. It's got a rooftop pool, a nice bar, fine furnishings. You know, things Jamie Lissau will never have. <laughs> Ever. The city had plans to move the single illegal males from the hotel to a facil facility in Brooklyn to make room for migrant families. But the men are not budging. So how's that for irony? We say to the male migrants, welcome to our country. And then they turn around and say to incoming migrant families, go back to where you came from. <laughs> So it appears that illegal immigrants are also vehemently against illegal immigration. <laughs> the moment they get here, they turn from helpless refugee into Ann Coulter. <laughs> I'm surprised they didn't start chanting, build a wall, build a wall. <laughs> My goodness, this is amazing. So when buses showed up to haul the men away from the hotel to a simpler but clean facility, they didn't hop on. Instead, they took to the sidewalk out front, camped out, demanding they stay, and pulling the asylum seeker card. They claim they're refugees, but complain the accommodations at the Brooklyn Cruise Terminal are subpar. <laughs> then they give the shaft to incoming families. <laughs> Here's one migrant's hot take. For all men, it's only four bathrooms. If one gets sick, everyone gets sick. It's very ugly. The beds are horrible. They're a piece of fabric. They're like a military bed. Oh. Sounds like your house, Jamie. <laughs> Only four bathrooms for all men? And this coming from guys who can fit 40 into a Toyota Corolla when sneaking across the border? <laughs> I get it, though, four bathrooms. That means they're a taco night away from disaster. <laughs> and how dare they give these asylum seekers something like a military bed? You mean a bed comfortable and enough for our troops who need to get a good night's sleep before going to war? Next time, maybe give us a heads up on the thread count you'd prefer. <laughs> you know, when you sneak into our country, you freeloaders! I'm sorry, but what asylum seeker would turn down any of this? Unless they're lying about the so-called hardships that they're allegedly escaping from. I mean, where are they seeking asylum from? The Sandals Resort in Cabo? <laughs> Have you seen some of these alleged refugees? They're dressed better than U.S. citizens. Where'd the coyotes drop them off? The Nike outlet store? <laughs> they don't look tired and downtrodden to me. You know, this looks downtrodden. <laughs> I don't see that. I've seen people look more exhausted after spending two weeks on a carnival cruise line. They're not the refugees like the ones who came through Ellis Island. And if they were refugees, ask those single men why they left their families behind. It's like a reverse Titanic where Jack pushes Rose off the driftwood. <laughs> That's how I would have ended it. I think we're being played. Thankfully, one smart, sexy man is pointing all of this out. I'm beginning to think that their hardship was greatly exaggerated. <laughs> They're coming here not because uh, there are, you know, refugees uh, uh, in danger from climate or crime or poverty. It's incentivized by our country to come here for jobs and free stuff. Because what desperate refugee comes to a sanctuary and complains about room and board? Mm. So true. 
So that guy's so hot, he should come with a warning like a McDonald's apple pie does. <laughs> So, if you're fleeing Central America, it had nothing to do with root causes, unless the root cause is American generosity. So you can stop pretending to look, Kamala. <laughs> and sorry, you can't call yourself refugees and still demand a timeshare when you get here. The fact is, it's lefty activists who are filling the heads of migrants with more <laughs> than an episode of Yellowstone. <laughs> As the New York po Post points out, Activists are deeply involved in the standoff itself with the larger effort to ramp up illegal migration. So this whole refugee crisis was a lie. I mean, it's a crisis for us, but not for them. And I say that for you know, being very, very pro-immigration with adjustments based on what our country needs. But we're not allowed to question any of this or say, hey, I wonder if a $300 a night room might be crazy. You remember those pictures of another hotel with trashed rooms and empty beer bottles, food thrown out? I mean, these guys are partying, and they're partying on Cat's dime, you know, <laughs> assuming she pays taxes. And now they're biting the hand that's feeding them for free. Sorry, folks, the next time you hear the word refugee, think of that great Tom Petty song and not these ingrates at the Watson Hotel. Welcome to tonight's guest. Her last name is McDonald, but she doesn't have a farm. Host of the evening edit on Fox Business, Liz McDonald. <laughs> and not only does this man write the news, he delivers it on his paper route. Fox News contributor and Washington Times opinion editor, Charlie Herr. If he has to hear one more Alaska joke, he's going to get up and leave on his dog sled. <laughs> Actor, writer, and comedian Jamie Lissau. <laughs> and she's living paycheck to paycheck, mainly because she keeps stealing her neighbor's paychecks. Fox News contributor, Cat Tim. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, I think that it's taxpayers here in New York City. We're all a little upset watching people get $300 a night hotel rooms and then complain. That's coming directly from people like me. But it's really got to upset you seeing immigrants, illegal immigrants, living a far better life than you. I mean, like, they're having a great time. They're socializing. They have friends. Some of them are actually making out. Yeah, some of them, <laughs> some of them are allowed near girls. Like, what the yeah. um, <laughs> You really just, when you were describing, I was like, oh my, you're like rooftop pool. I never, I don't even have a floor top pool. <laughs> um, you know how much more expensive it is to get it up there? And um, <laughs> it's really frustrating. And that's like a, I, I, this whole story blew my mind, especially yep. the thing about them sending other families away. Yes. Right? And right near there, there's much more affordable housing, by the way. Like just a little bit. Down. I stayed in, a, it's not like the best area, but I stayed in a hotel a couple blocks from there last time I was here. Not a great area. I remember I went to the front desk and I go, hey, where's the men's room? And she goes, just anywhere outside. <laughs> um, can I do really quick? I have yes. one point yes. and one joke, unless nobody laughs, and then I have two points. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, please. Let's be, I think we have to be grateful. Mm -hmm. Right, like the they come, they're seeking asylum, and it, wherever they're coming from, we're trying to help them. We're trying to do the best we can, and I think there's like a little bit of like, be really grateful. We're trying to like uh, provide the best we can. Whoever's in charge, it's trying to provide like the best food and and do the best they can. So it's like just I don't know, maybe try to don't complain about everything and go, wow, that's really kind mm -hmm. that people did that. Like for instance, when I was married, I probably slept. Um, half of the years I slept on the couch, mm -hmm. right? But I was like, at least I'm inside the house. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> That's like a good place to be. <laughs> That's what they should do. I was on the couch so much, like when my kids wanted to watch, they'd be like, Dad, do you mind if we sit on your cry bed and watch a movie? <laughs> Point and a sad, very sad story. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, um, Charlie, I have to ask you that. Or this, it, when, it, when it dawned on me that the, the, the male illegal immigrants were telling they didn't want to move the families, they are definitely going to be Republicans. Yeah. 
<laughs> the, Democrat, the Democrats are counting on, on all of these uh, Central Americans to become Democrats. No, yeah, they get, yeah. the moment they're here, they're saying, get out of here. Yeah. Yeah. Get off my lawn. Get off my lawn. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's real simple. It's all human nature, yes. which is what's unique about our country, is that we have a country that's built on understanding human nature and sort of working around it. But it's just basically, of course they don't want new people coming in <laughs> and taking their stuff any more than anybody else does. The whole country doesn't want yeah. it. But it is true. The whole thing, not, not that the crisis isn't real, it, the crisis is real, but it is an entirely manufactured one, manufactured by politicians. Mm. It's entirely a scam. And all of these people are pawns. And when, and when Democrats criticize Republican governors for using migrants as pawns, no, they're not. You're using them as pawns. Yeah. And you've been using them as pawns to, 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 in order to build up this insane charade about racism in America, um, they, they are the ones who are actually abusing these people. Mm -hmm. You may be, you know, I drifted off. I was thinking about a, like a New Yorker cartoon I should submit. It's like a, a, a lifetime chess board. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, people play them and the pawn goes, stop using me as a pawn. That was really good. I swear to God, when he was saying that, I was like, why does nobody ever use someone as a rook? Yes! <laughs> I've used someone as a queen before. <laughs> Liz. Yes. Liz, I wanted to ask this question for maybe two years, but I didn't have the guts to do it. So you give it to me? No, yes. No, but, but, but I, I mentioned it yesterday on The Five and then today, that like I kept looking at the migrants and I go like, they didn't look like they walked very far. So I never know where the drop-off point is, where they just all of a sudden, and then they always had a white bag. They always had a white bag stuff. And they, were all, they weren't sweating. Like when I think of somebody, a refugee, they're sweating, they're on a lifeboat. They're like coming from Cuba. They're coming, they're fleeing Nazi Germany. They're, they're uh, fleeing Chairman Mao. They're yeah. fleeing the potato famine, Jamie. <laughs> But here it's like it's like they're all they're all like he they're healthy. Some are actually well, a you, little plump, Liz. You, you, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> they do look plump. I know. I, you know, you think women and children fleeing missile strikes or right. something, but they these are men men in designer bubble jackets yes. throwing away dozens of bags of what looks to me like Chick Fil A. I'm like, bring it over here. Exactly. Well, I, I, so. You know what gets me is that this looks like a block party for activists. Mm. There are more activists showing up sure. at these hotels and the migrants inside. So it feels like, all right, if, the, if you care about it, by the way, they're nonprofits existing on the taxpayer's nickel. You take them in. Yeah. You take in the illegal immigrants, right? When I saw those dozens of bags just tossed out, Right. Yeah. What was it? Hamburgers. I mean, it looked like I couldn't really tell. It was food. like looked like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Mm -hmm. And don't knock a peanut good peanut. I will never day. knock that. Don't you, Liz? I, I you'll promise. Off, you'll be off this show. <laughs> right. In a hot Kat, minute. Cat. Migrants were actually delaying your path to work today, weren't they? Yes. What? Ha tell us about it, please. Okay. Well, I know we're talking about this as like an immigration crisis, and it proves the immigration crisis out of control. For me, the thing I notice about this most is it proves how insane the welfare state is. Right. Okay, this is a welfare issue, first and foremost, because like you said, Charlie, like if you're in a luxury hotel room for free and being like, get out of here, for to be like, I don't want to, is like not the craziest thing I've ever heard. The craziest thing I've ever heard is that our government has such a level of disrespect for our money that they're like, what do we do? Ah, let's just put them in luxury hotel yes, rooms. exactly. Right. Everybody will pay for it. They don't care. Even though they still stay here, even though they, we all just endured the, the dismal Christmas tree traffic, yes. and we somehow still didn't move out. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, and also for these activists to be getting out there and making such a big deal about the right to a luxury hotel room, I think it diminishes the real struggle Exactly. That a lot of people who really are fleeing, are, you know, fleeing for asi asylum face and people that want to come here legally and get a work visa, just how bogged down and expensive and ridiculous that process is. Focus on those things. The, the, the right to a luxury hotel room is not what any real struggling person is so pissed off about. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.